let's get stuck straight into it. This week, the first week of the month, as for the ones that have been watching the markets for a little while now, we should all know that it is the heaviest week in terms of data that, that is due to come out. And this week is no exception. Um, there's plenty of volatility this week. It's probably the, the heaviest volat volatility of the month, the first week of the month, that is. Okay, so what do we have? All right, so a couple of big things that I want to talk about. First of all, let's focus on the homeland being Australia. We have the RBA uh, interest rate decision uh, on tomorrow, I think. There we go interest rate RBA tomorrow 230 uh, the cash rate and the statement now the the prediction is that uh, of course last month we cut interest rates uh, the RBA cut interest rates the prediction is heavily probably 90% of all analysts believe that there's not going to be a movement tomorrow now should there be a movement should they make a cut it will drive the Aussie dollar down very very quickly and very very hard main reason simply being because everything that took place last month and the statement that accompanied the rate cut kind of signaled that they were happy and that the reason why they did the cut last month was to not have to do another one later in the year. So if they should now come out and give you a number which is lower than the 2%, so even if they made a 0.25 cut, it will drive the Aussie dollar down. Okay, that's the first thing. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anybody thinks that's going to happen. Nevertheless, I just voice in it so that everybody understands. What we really need to look out for tomorrow, the key for tomorrow is going to be in the statement itself. So it's not going to be in the actual number that we get over here if we're going to get a cut or not going to get a cut. The key to tomorrow's statement is in the wording selected by um, the delivery of the RBA rate statement. And that wording is basically key. If they say things like, one thing that we should note for starters is last month they cut interest rates and the Aussie dollar went up. We talked about that already, so I won't go back into that and the reasons for that. But nevertheless, we are back at that same point where they need to make the, the decision again and they will be much, much happier that the dollar has actually pulled back. So if they indicate satisfaction with the where the Aussie dollar is right now, it kind of, and that they're happy with everything, how it's going along, basically there's not going to be too much excitement. But if they indicate that in somehow they become a little bit more aggressive and they open the door for further cuts, later in the year, it could still drive the dollar down even though there wasn't a cut tomorrow. So the key is to the wording of that statement. Okay, uh, It's a little bit more difficult to trade the wording of the statement because you've got to see the statement or hear it being read out live to be able to react to that. All right. Nevertheless, it's important for us to understand the reasons of the behavior of the market behavior uh, to the statement being delivered. All right. So the key thing the RBA statement where they, I believe they're going to be very clear whether they insinuate further cuts later in the year that could drive us down okay um, or whether they're going to remain on halt one analyst in particular he's a little bit left-wing in terms of thought patterns he believes no more cuts till 2016 I'm not sure about that nevertheless I'm just saying it uh, just so that everybody has heard it from somewhere okay all right so that's the Aussie dollar. Um, of course, we had a bit of Aussie data today already. Um, this morning, uh, I can't remember what the numbers came out, and we also had PMI figures for from China. Uh, later in the week, we also have the GDP figures for the Aussie and retail sales. This one's probably going to do something. All right. So, in terms of the Aussie dollar this week, there's lots and lots of data. All right, and I'm not even focusing on the U.S. side of the currency pair. All right. So that's the Aussie dollar. The next one I want to talk about a little bit is the euro. Okay, the euro it doesn't have as much data as the Aussie. Okay, so we do have the the, the press conference. Now this press conference is more related to uh, the QE program and the tapering. So those are the things that we're interested in. I don't think it has a great effect on the Greece situation. The Greece situation is totally separate. And while I've just mentioned it. 
this Friday, the 5th of June, is the deadline. Okay, they have to make a 300 billion odd dollar payment to the IMF, and if they don't, or they don't somehow um, pull off some magical extension date, this is the extension of the extension. We we have to understand that. All right. If they don't, they will be in default situation. That will drive the euro down in a hurry. All right. Now, the interesting part about that payment, which is due on Friday, is the following. The Greece government effectively has made a promise to their people in the elections, if they were elected, that they were going to stick to some certain criteria. That criteria basically means that they're going to default on that payment. So they're in a sticky situation, the government. So if they stick to their words, they're probably going to default. And if they don't, uh, they'll make the payment and then it's going to upset the people of Greece. So it's a tricky, tricky one. Um, that was the highlight that I saw out of this decision. I haven't even, I have no idea if they have the money to actually make the payment. If they don't, I'm sure they can lend it from somewhere else and those kind of things. This is a tough one. I actually genuinely think this one's 50-50. I, I didn't think any of the other times was 50-50. I actually genuinely think that this time there is a real chance of a default. Okay, or at least 50%. So that's the euro. All right. GBP, GBP this week has got a bit of data. We've got PMI, we've got construction PMI as well, and we've got official bank rates as well. Um, so all the three big central banks uh, deliver their official rates. No one is really expecting a change for the GBP on, on any interest rates. Um, I think the GBP USD pair is going to be moved more by the US side than the GBP side itself. All right, and then finally, finally, the big one, the big one, we have the U.S. The U.S. has got a, quite a bit of data uh, this week. All right, starting, where do we have? We have PMI numbers uh, tomorrow. We have trade balance numbers. We also have unemployment claims. And, of course, we have non-farm at the end of the week. So if you've never ever traded non-farm payrolls, if you've never ever seen the market move around non-farm payrolls, um, it'd be, it's in winter, it happens early, it's only 10.30 at night on Friday night, log on, just watch, all right? And you will see the market really, really uh, rock, rattle, rock and roll and rattle and move, all right? So I guess this week, I can't really isolate any one single pair if, I had to, I'm going to be leaning towards the Aussie, Aussie USD, all right, because I think that tomorrow's um, statement is going to come with some surprises, all right. I don't think we're going to get a surprise on the number, but I'm going to think we're going to get a little bit of a, a surprise that will make the market shake uh, through the statement. And the other one has got to be the Euro USD, predominantly because, well, they're both USD pairs because of non-farm payrolls and also the the Greece situation um, with the deadline being Friday okay we'll have a look at some charts what the implications are what we can actually get out of this but these are two heavy heavy moving currency pairs for this particular week if you get this one right and fundamentally it all locks in this could be a really 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 big big trade for us okay let's bring up the charts Let's have a look what we've got, and we'll get stuck straight into it. As always, for the newer people in the room, if you do have a question, type them in. Um, as I see them, I will respond to them. Okay? All right, so Aussie dollar. We're currently sitting at 76. Um, we said last week, you can see clearly on my chart here, I marked out this region here, and we said if we get a clean close below that area, we are short sellers. What happened? We got a clean close below. I'll zoom in a bit better. It's very clear there. That went right through. So you should have entered market there into that direction. Can I just get a quick show of hands? Anybody take this trade? Okay, well done, Rav. Anybody else? Phil, great. Um, the beauty about this trade also is that you can 
the, the risk management side of this particular style of trade is relatively uh, a little bit easier to control than a pattern type trade because we can see that we're clearly in a down curve here. I'm on a four hour chart by the way, uh, but where we're on a down on a down section of chart, okay, and then as soon as we get that break, we can simply just use the last fractal as your stop. All right, so even if you wanted to trail this market down. You know, apply now. Last week we we spoke about. I mean, last Thursday I spoke about the trend type trade and the T chaser. It's it's a method that uses the fractal as a kind of trailing stop. So you could basically get an opportunity to bump your trade down like that. Um, if you like that method, by all means use it. But at the very least, what I do expect, what I would want you to give careful consideration to is if you place your stop up there and now remember I'm just drawing a there but I'm about five or six pips above that high just to clarify for anybody this distance here is my risk okay which we all understand that we allocate a dollar value towards but as soon as I get the same distance below okay so which is around about there somewhere I'm doing this visually that's the point where this region is where my risk became one to one meaning I risked one to make one at that point it's it would be nice if you took some type of action with your trade so that you do not end up with a losing trade okay a lot of the trades that I work with on a Monday a lot of them are going to be in the vicinity of 1.5 to 1 up to 3 to 1 trades for the for the ones that have been come into the classes for a lot longer you know that these are about the numbers that I work with and I guess if I average it out it's about two to one um, and and this is a typical typical kind of trade that we would normally take let me just measure out quickly so that's the risk so I can see that there's one there this trade easily made two to one okay made probably more than two to one but nevertheless as long as you get to one to one we want to take risk off the table all right so what do we have this week right now give me one second I'm on a four-hour chart I need to go to a one a daily chart today okay we're at 76.50 key for me this week is here the 75 region is going to be key especially with so much da data coming out this week we could easily easily hit one se uh, the 75 region we're only 150 pips away from it right now we've got a little bit of history over here where the market pushed back off it we're coming towards it again right now um, my my gut feeling is this all right and i'm saying this from fundamentals i'm still pro i'm pro us dollar and i'm a little bit anti aussie dollar so i would like to sell but i don't want to sell right now okay so at, at the levels that i am right now it's kind of like it's too close to that level there's not enough room for me so i'm looking for selling opportunities so i'm going to be looking for a couple of things I'm either going to be looking for the market to bounce up a little bit and then sell from up there. So I'm going to try and sell a pullback, okay? Or alternatively, if that does not happen and then everything just zooms down, I'm going to be a seller if I get a closing candle. Now, I have to close underneath 75. If I close under 75, I'm happy to ride this to maybe 73, 72 into that area okay so I want a clean break now I understand that this trade is the toughest trade psychologically for you all to make just by the people that took the last one which was this one here okay um, and I missed a couple I think Karen took it as well so did Romy um, not many of you took that trade and the reason why you did not take it is because psychologically you've got you've looked at this and you've gone no way this has already moved this much I don't care what Christian says it's not I'm not taking this trade and that's okay alright now what I'm telling you now again if 
I get a clean 75 break, I'm taking that trade short like that. If I get stopped out, I don't care. It's all about the probabilities. All right. We've seen plenty of examples where where we took where we take this kind of trade, and we've seen probably more winners than losers. And the thing is that when we win, we're at two to one or one and a half to one, so our ratio is even greater again. All right. Now I was analysing this current spot right now. Let me just double check it again. I just want to check a couple of things. I'm not at a fib level there. I'm not at one down here either. So the temptation to trade an inside candle right there is very big, but I have no reason to trade it. I'm in no man's land. I'm not on a support level. I'm not at a fib level. I'm nowhere. All right. So if I trade that and it went up, well then it's it's I'm doing it for the wrong reason. So what I'm keen in. I am going to put a marker across here and what I'm going to be looking for is if I get a candle that clo closes below there that's what I want to do. I'm going to leave that mark on my chart, on my 4 hour chart, I don't really have anything. The, I, on a 4 hour chart what you can look for is this, it, it's not there yet but this is what you, you can look for. If this bounces up now to somewhere like that and then comes back down to there. At that point, I want you to draw in these two lines like that and try and look for the trade down there. Okay? I would say this one, but fundamentally, this one, I, I don't want that one today. So I'll just rub that out. Okay? So, based off my four hour chart, if, this, if you see this come up and bounce and bounce, and it's got to get narrowing, all right? Look for that kind of trade, and you might get a bit of an entry, all right? Alternatively, you're a little bit more aggressive. The other way that you can do it is you might want to pick the trade. If we get towards that line, if you get towards this region, again, if this comes up towards there somewhere, you might just want to hit it from there. Does that make sense? Is that clear for everybody, what our plan is on the Aussie dollar? Basically, I'm saying I am... A Aussie US dollar seller that's what my sentiments are I am now looking for a technical reason to back my fundamentals and as soon as I see it pop up I will take the trade okay all right let's move on let's have a look at the euro USD okay euro USD we took a little tiny trade let me zoom in on it so we can see it better just to show you that I'm not biased, I do show trades that don't work out. Okay, and this is actually important. So everybody that was in the class last week, what I want you to note is this. At the time, we were on this candle over here, this red one. And this candle here had a fractal. Okay, it had a fractal on it. And we had an inside candle combination right there. Does everybody remember that? Karen took that one. Yep, Rav remembers it. We all, we all clear. Yep, Alan. Okay, so we had an inside candle, and the other thing that you would have noticed is the zigzag indicator would have been coming straight down to that point there. Had it shot up, it would have been something like that, and we would have had a great trade. All right. Now, as it turns out, what happened was. Um, we have another inside oh, what what happened oh, sorry sorry I got confused what happened was uh, we triggered up we actually it triggered up first and then it came down and stopped us out so in terms of what we lost it was a small trade it was about 35 pips okay so we entered the market right there where I got that mark and we got stopped out on the same candle right there now if you look closely after we would have got another setup right there. All right. And I've analyzed this one already, and I can tell you that you had an inside candle, then you had two inside candles, then we had three inside candles there, but it broke down, which basically means no trade. So even if you had applied the principle that we've learned and you tried to take the trade again, you had protection because we broke down and you never got triggered for a second trade. 
okay so the the one that we did take we got stopped out on all right so what do we have right now let me just I'll leave those marks on my chart what I noticed was on a daily chart I noticed this who likes channel trading guys who likes the channels the channels have been very very nice to us we got one two three touches okay okay Murphy likes them Lois likes them Roy good and I've got a second touch right now so I'm right I've got a channel happening right now on my daily chart so we let's see how we can play this one out give me one moment let me just zoom in a bit we didn't get a setup here I there's no setup there so that that's okay so normally I wouldn't just take this trade because we came down to the bottom that's not a good enough reason yet I kind of look for the price action setup but we didn't get one so that's okay the trade that I'm actually that I wrote down is I'm not actually going to try and trade the channel because I feel that the euro I'm, I'm anti euro and pro dollar so the trade that I actually want to trigger for me and you know which one will be really really good guys right now we've just had three up candles if today's candle this one here can come back swallow all three up and close below the channel like that if we get a candle like that I don't know what is a better signal than that tomorrow morning if I get that I would really really like that okay so I actually get the feeling that I want to trade a break of the channel in a downward direction I don't know when it's going to happen um, but that's the that's the trade that I'm kind of favoring okay now Lois is saying we're on a 61 retracement let me check let me check yes we are okay what Lois is saying is that when I do my fib from there to the top all the way up there and I come back to here this level here is my 61.8 Fibonacci retracement it's also landing on the channel I'm kind of two days a little bit late for that trade I didn't get a price action entry out of that three candle combination so I'm a little bit reluctant to take it Lois because I didn't get a, a setup I agree I'm at the right area I agree with that I'm just trying to be a little bit more conservative and I think price action has, has helped us more in, in say the last seven eight months um, so I'm going to walk away from it I'm not going to buy euro USD okay but uh, does everybody understand the trade that Lois found she's basically saying bounce off there back up to the channel okay um, I just don't have a price action entry on it that's all uh, could I have entered long on the retracement and the t on the channel yes I could have and if I had done that it would be a little bit more aggressive so basically I would have had a pending order sitting somewhere in that region and if I had done that you know the trade would have got about 130 pips in my favor your stop would have been about say 70 so you would have almost got your two to one but that what I'm trying to say is that trades already finished for us okay uh, that one would have happened Thursday or something like that last week no probably Wednesday okay all right so for the euro USD I'm um, I'm looking for a channel for a channel break all right so the other thing that you may want to look for let me just get rid of this Fibonacci clean up my chart a little bit uh, 
The other thing that you may want to look for is we we just had a con uh, um, this levels drop down. So if we get another drop down there somewhere like that, then basically you can apply these lines there and look for a, a quicker entry of the new lines that you set up on your chart okay so that's another option that you have but I, I think the daily sell may, may may come along before all of that alright so keep an eye on it if I see this a candle close below below the channel uh, and, it, and it takes things out well then that's a, that's an entry for us to go short alright let's move on to the GBP USD okay this is a channel that we look we saw last week or well, we were actually looking at it for a little while but we saw it it was off a four hour chart I think it was off a daily as well no well we did it off a four hour chart and let me zoom in we were here over there somewhere last week somewhere in here we had already had the signal it was clear I was a little bit reluctant to take it because we hadn't taken that little level out um, did anybody take this trade take this trade short GBP USD Lois took it okay Rav Karen no all right um, what uh, what we did Alan took it well done um, what we did was because we had a fractal already I drew this line in last week so I basically grabbed that line and drew it in and I was thinking that we may we were maybe going to get a bounce and then come back through it or, or break through that way um, consequently the line bounced up and then you could have even used this line as your entry level it would have got you an entry in around about there somewhere or somewhere in that area and again with this type of trade let me zoom in on it so if you use that line as an entry let's say you got in here somewhere you could have used that one there as your stop okay so just go back to the last significant little high that you had before it made a dip which is that one there and if you look at that distance of risk you know you can see that your your risk was off the table very very quickly and you can see that this trade ended up being at least a three to one type trade okay so essentially what you were doing with this trade you were trading really the big channel you're trading the big channel which was this one over here um, but we just timed our entry as such okay um, and this was a perfect example that I hesitated and I'll be honest about it I I don't know why I just chickened out from it or whatever whatever you want to call it the psychology of trading it's one of those beasts that we need to master the more trades we take the, the quicker the, that we pull the trigger when we see what we're looking for the easier it becomes okay so that was that so what have I got for us this week there is one thing I saw on my daily chart let me just double check yet let me get rid of these lines now I don't need them and let me get rid of the channel as well okay on my daily chart if I take a fib from there to there I did a class not long ago about consistency of using your fib lines all I've done is I've gone from the last zigzag which is there to the last two zigzags and I've joined it up as such and I've come down and I've hit my 78.6 Fibonacci level but more importantly what I like about this particular level right now is that I'm, you can see that I'm starting to get the candle pattern that we're looking for so as long as this current candle that is here this one I'll put an arrow as long as that candle stays within the parameters of the candle in front of it and closes somewhere inside of there tomorrow we're going to have an inside candle this one's going to have a fractal and then you're going to be ready 
to try and trade a bounce off your 78.6 Fibonacci level. Okay, Karen saying that this gap finally closed as well. Yes, it has. Okay, um, so when that gap closes, basically there would have been a lot of orders in the market sitting in there, and they've just trickled through, closed out. So basically, it, it, this area here could be a little bit empty, which is kind of good for a bounce back. All right, so you could get this trade. So put this one on your to watch list. This one will be ready tomorrow. All right. If, it, if as long as the current candle does not exceed the candle before. All right. That's the only thing I can see on the GBP USD. Does everybody understand the trade? So, if let's say let's pretend that this candle finishes right there. If that was the case, and a new candle starts tomorrow right there, what you do is you put in your pending order at the break of that candle. In that direction, your stop's going to be there somewhere. If the price should break the bottom of that candle before it triggers your order, you've got to go back and cancel your order out. Okay. All right. So that's what we have for the GBP USD. Let me have a quick look at one more thing that I just kind of saw. Give me one second, guys. No, that's all. That, that's all we got. So t we've got to wait for tomorrow, and let's see if we get the setup that we're looking for. Let me just put a mark on my chart. What I'm going to be looking for is something like this. Something like that. Okay. Gold. All right. Now, gold has been flirting with this bottom line over here, and it hasn't given us... Or, I haven't seen a... Oh, this it was. Give me a sec. I missed that. We're in a channel. Let me zoom in for a second. I'm on a daily. Is that a setup, guys? Is this These two there? Is that an engulfing? Yeah? Who agrees? Who thinks that is an engulfing setup? Yep. Okay. Everybody's on board. All right, it's not the prettiest one because the, the, these candles are very wicky. They've got long wicks, but long wicks at the bottom I like because there's, it's, it just means that it, it shoots down and the market keeps buying it back up. Um, the only problem is it's doing it on both sides. Now, if I saw this when this candle started right here, I would be a buyer straight away. The problem now is I'm two days late and I'm seeing this, and it's throwing me off. Okay, so it's it's affecting my 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 ability to make a decision, and this is what sometimes happens. So if I, for example, let's, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to to. Okay, what I'm trying to do is if this is all, let's rub this out so this doesn't exist. Okay, if that's all I saw, then when this candle started, I would have bought it and I would have gone into that trade. But because now I can see this and this these long weeks are turning me off. So it's up to you. All right, I've already been affected. Um, I can't shake that thought out of my head now. So basically for me, I'm just going to sit this one out. All right, um, I'll leave you to make your own decisions. Other than that, if we're at the bottom of a channel, so if the channel holds, we would expect to, you're going to get your 2 to 1 ratio easily, even if you just get to about this level there. All right. Uh, let me have a quick look on a 4-hour chart, see if there's anything else. No.
Sorry, I had myself on mute. Can you hear me now, guys? <laughs> Apologies. Okay, uh, what did I say? I said, um, if you're not in this trade already, um, it, you kind of need to wait to get to, to get into it because it's already moved away. Um, so it's a trade that is in motion. So for the ones that are in the trade, that's it. You, you're, you're going along for the bus ride, so to speak. And for the ones that want to get in, and we were trying to get in last week. Oh, that's what I was basically just saying when I was on mute. Uh, we were trying to get into this trade last week on a pullback, and it didn't even pull back and give us a chance. So if, if you weren't in on the trade last week, you, you, unless you got in at the current level, then you, you haven't been in at all. all I, can I just, I just want to get a, a show of hands. I just want to see... Uh, I'll give you some numbers. I want to see who's in this trade right now. Oh, okay. So we got one. Okay, we've got five people. No, one yes. Two yeses. Anybody else? There's about thirty-five people in the room. So everybody else, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining, is a no. Okay, all right, so if you want to get in on this trade, the logical place that you would get in, you'd have to treat it like a breakout. So let's get rid of, there's our region. We've broken out, so you'd want some kind of a pullback and then hit it again, okay? That's what you would be looking for. And what you can use is your Fibonacci to help you find that pullback and let's do that I've drawn it from this point all the way to that point there there's my 23.6 and there's my 38.2 this one is aggressive this one is more conservative okay um, so that's what you would be looking at if you want to get in all right uh, I'm not going to call any trades on this I'm in this trade already um, I've been pro US dollar for a long time and I kind of don't want to leave this trade until I hit 128 to be honest. <laughs> At least That's the least that I want to hit on this trade. I'm going to try and be stubborn um, and let's see if we can get it. Okay, so I always talk about that one trade that can give you six, seven, eight hundred that you stay, stay strong to. This is my one f for this year. Alright, so I'm, so I've been in from about 118. Okay, I went through all that waiting and waiting and waiting so I want to I want to stay on that okay I've got nothing else on USDN for you so let's move on euro yen all right euro yen last week we said let's watch this key and I said if we break the 133 down we are sellers we never broke 133 we got to about 133.10 uh, we didn't break it and definitely we didn't close below the level has held it's held um, now I'm looking for any trading opportunities on my euro yen and what I can see when I've gone over to um, a daily chart let me zoom in a little bit I've, I get the feeling that we've got a range in here for a little bit We've had this rally on the euro, okay? Um, if we get a little bit of not so pleasant news on the on the Greece front, that'll easily bring us back. So we may rally and, and play around in this range. It's a 300 point range. So what I want to look for right now is I'm going to look for counter trading, counter trend trading opportunities inside of this range. All right, this is ideal. Um, so what I'll do is I'll step into a four hour chart, let me zoom out a little bit, and oh there's one right now, give me a sec, oh we've just missed one, on a four hour chart there, there was a inside candle and then this one's engulfed at all which is kind of good um, so this one's kind of over so forget about that one we've, we've missed that one um, but what we can look for is this uh, look for a narrowing trading range so if we get something 
we, we're going to need another bounce. We're going to need something like that and then draw that line and draw this line across there and then we're ready to to do either the straight out trend uh, counter trend off your four hour chart go back and review that strategy or we can use the zigzag uh, to help us build converging triangles and break out of those regions okay Karen you got some of this trade this morning well done I know Karen trade likes the counter trend strategy um, this is an ideal section of chart to apply that principle because you can clearly see that we're, we're entering a ranging region okay um, so every time we get towards the fringes this area or that area there's opportunities okay so well done for that alright so right now there's no trade right right now on the euro yen however this is the method that you're going to have to be keep a, an eye on because this is where the trades are going to come from for the euro yen if we break out up or down well then that changes now we start to look for trends okay let's move on kiwi dollar oh this is an, a little bit of an awkward looking channel but I've got three touches and two touches at the top Let's zoom in. Four hour chart. Is there a setup there? No. Where are we? 71. 71. I don't really want to buy a Kiwi dollar. It's kind of like I'm trying to fight against the juggernaut of the US. Let me have a quick look for something else. Give me one second. Okay, guys, this is a tough one to trade. Okay, so the best I can find is I'd be interested in going long around about this area here for two reasons. One, I'm on a fib level, but I would have to give this trade a bit of breathing space. The other one is I'm, I'll be coming up to the 70 level. It's had a massive, massive run in one direction. Um, and even then, we're only 100 pips away from that area that I'm talking about. And strong US data would just blow right through that. So forget about it. Kiwi dollar, don't touch it. Okay, there's just nothing pretty on it right now. If I had an inside candle set up off this channel here on a four hour, I would take it. But I don't. And I don't really want to go against it. Um, so when I feel that way I just move to the next chart okay so there you go Kiwi dollar stay away Euro Aussie okay Euro Aussie we had a trade last week from there we were short um, if you stayed in that trade basically you've been stopped out okay um, depends where you had your stop you might have hit to got to your one-to-one -one level if not you would have got stopped out there all right so that's unfortunate because it broke out really nice and then it just turned around okay so that's Euro Aussie let me see what we have right now the best thing that I can see oh hang on a minute let me get rid of these lines now I don't need them Okay, that's on a daily, what's that look like on a four hour chart?
this is another one that inside candle opportunity down there but it's already moved away let me check the fib level Ah, oh, shame this one we, we're just a little bit too late for this one guys uh, we're on a good fib level we have an inside candle on the top of a range as well in this direction but we're just a little bit late on it so it's unfortunate let's see if I can find something else one second in my notes my notes say look for a narrowing range okay so what I'm saying is because we've just taken out a high um, look for the market to come back as such so grab your line grab your line and try and trade breaks okay um, that's all there's nothing showing right now in the Euro Aussie and this one's going to be interesting like I don't know if if the if the trading range is going to get a bit tighter this week simply because weakness on the euro and weakness on the Aussie it's 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 a matter of which one's going to weaken quicker than the other so it's going to be an interesting one to watch this week okay um, any questions on that let me I'll give you a chance to type them in let me just go back and have a quick look at what we've said today Okay, Aussie dollar, what did we say? Forgot already. Oh, okay, Aussie dollar 75 key region. Alright, so we want to break 75 cleanly uh, before we're sellers. Um, if not, we're just going to have to wait. Alright, I'm not a buyer right now, even though there is an inside candle type setup for me. It's the, the location of the setup, it's in no man's land, so we're not buyers, we're just waiting. Alright. Yep, that's correct. Euro USD. We're in a channel. We didn't get a buy setup, uh, but I am interested in a break of the channel in a downward direction. All right. So look out for that one. GBP USD. We may have a setup tomorrow morning. All right. Depending on what this candle ends up looking like, but we could have an inside candle to go long off a 78.6 fib level. All right, that's GBPUSD gold. There is a trade right now. If anybody's aggressive, it's already triggered. Get it in now. You're you're not too far off the, the original entry, um, but there is one there right now. US yen, where this is a trade in momentum, so we're not touching it. <clears throat> we're just continuing. Um, if anything, if anybody wants to join onto this trade, look for pullbacks. Uh, to, to get into the trade. Euro Yen, look for range, uh, counter trend strategies. The market appears to be ranging. We just missed one. Um, we're two, two, three candles too late on that one. But look out for narrowing range, trading range and look for counter trend strategies. Okay, we dollar, we're not touching. Uh, if I had have had a, a clean inside candle or a, something like that set up I may have been interested um, actually there is a setup there nobody saw this I hate this now because I've seen it is that a setup guys yes or no Yeah, Alan, I did say no, Alan, but is that an engulfing candle though? It's engulfing the wrong way, I mean in terms of body. It's a tricky one, okay? I hate that I just saw that right now. The candle that I'm actually looking at is this one, candle number one there, and this one here 
candle number two. This candle number two is engulfing candle number one. And candle number two has also got the fractal. So in theory, this is a setup. Alright? Um, you would have entered the market there somewhere. Your stop would have been there and you're about the same level. Um, don't worry about it. Don't. It, 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 Alan, with the engulfing, it's not about breaking down. Okay? Because with the engulfing, this is the candle that engulfs that one. So basically, in theory, the way you trade it is as soon as this candle started right there, you would have taken the trade. I'm going to cover price action trend trading this week, um, and I'll go over this in, in, in heaps detail. Yes, I agree, Alan. I don't like the buying, but I'm just showing you the setup. So that's why I said I hate that I saw this right now because I should have noticed it before, but I didn't. Um, so stay away from the Kiwi dollar. So the, the call is forget about it. I just wanted to show you that there was an actual setup there. Okay. All right. Finally, Euro AUD. We're waiting for a setup using counter trend strategy there was one there earlier it's already happened so we'll leave it alone um, other than that any final questions guys before we call it a day we're all good just one thing I just want to say just to to let you guys know um, I had a little bit of an accident about two weeks ago my knee and I'm having surgery on Friday I don't think it's going to affect none of the classes. If anything, I'll be doing it from bed. Um, this week will be fine. Next week, uh, if if it is affecting me or something like that, um, I may try and change the time or something. Worst case scenario is I'm, I may miss one class. So I, I need to apologize in advance. Um, I'm just having surgery on Friday to fix. Um, yes, it was a soccer injury. I did my ACL on my right knee. So um, I think that just about retires me now. I don't feel like I want to play <laughs> anymore. Um, but I should be okay. Thank you f for the, the kind words, guys. Um, that, that takes place on Friday. Um, I don't think it's going to affect anything, but just in case, just letting you know ahead of time. Okay? Other than that, I'll see you on Thursday, and we'll cover, we'll, we'll do trend trading. We'll, we'll stay with trend trading and we'll do some price action. I'll see if I can dig up some extra goodies that might assist us in picking up trades. All right, everybody have a great week. Make sure that you're aware of those news announcements. It's a heavy week, and I'll speak to you on Thursday. Bye for now.